when you're talking to the seller and you're listening and you're being conversational, there's four key questions. You're going to want to write this down. So I'm going to go through them slow. There's four key questions you need to ask someone who's behind on their mortgage payment. You need this information to understand how you could help. Number one, how many months are you behind? Now, a lot of people, especially if they're over a year behind or they're several months behind, they might not have an exact answer and that's okay. If they tell you they're not sure, just say, hey, no problem, no problem. Give me a rough estimate. How many months do you think you're behind? Give me your best guess, all right? That's the first bit of information you need to understand. Question number two, once they tell you they're X amount of months behind, is it an active foreclosure? AKA, did your bank start the foreclosure process on you? No matter what you plan to do with this property, whether it's a quick cash sale, a flip, a sub two, a lease option, whatever your exit strategy is, you need to understand how much time you have to help them. Once the bank starts the foreclosure process, the clock starts ticking. So question number two, you need to find out, is this an active foreclosure? Now, depending on what they tell you, yes or no, is gonna depend on what you ask them for question number three. Assuming the answer is yes, the bank filed foreclosure, they're moving forward. Okay, no problem. Question number three, what is your sale date? So you want to find out, did they give you a sale date? And then if so, what is that sale date? What happens is the bank files a motion to foreclose. And then as they're going through, the next step is to give a foreclosure sale date to when they're going to take the property back and then auction it off to the highest bidder. You need to know this as an investor. Is it an active foreclosure? If so, what is that sale date? Because again, you need to understand, do you need to get attorney involved? How much time do you have to help them? It's very, very crucial. And then that very important question, number four, what's the mortgage balance? This is going to be something, again, they, they might not know what their actual payoff is, but typically they should have an idea. So if they have a payoff for you, awesome, great. You're going to verify it anyway. You're trying to get a ballpark. Even if they don't have an exact payoff amount for you, get as close as you could. Tell them, say, you know, if you had to guess, what do you think you owe? And again, this is important because you know their motivation, right? You understand that they're behind on their mortgage payments, but you still don't know how you could help them. And those four key questions, which I'm going to repeat for you again in a second, because I really want you to write them down. They're so important. You need to find out that mortgage balance. Let's say you were planning on doing a sub two. Well, what's their mortgage balance that you're going to be taking over, right? And what do they owe against that? Because you're going to have to come up with that money to make that loan whole if you're doing a sub two. Maybe you planned on wholesaling the deal. Once they told you their mortgage balance, the property's worth the hundred grand, they owe 150. Well, now you can't wholesale it because they're underwater. You have to find that information out. So again, I'm going to go over those key questions so you can write them down. Number one, how many months behind are you or your best estimate? How many months? Number two, did the bank start the foreclosure process on you? Is it an active foreclosure as we speak? Number three, if they did, did they give you a sale date? Did they tell you when they're going to be auctioning the property off? And then number four, what do you owe? What is your mortgage balance or, or the best estimate you could get? So those are the four key questions.